Hi, it's Graham here. I've been lucky enough to get myself off another wild camp. We've just been dropped off by my lovely wife at uh, Burness, and the plan is we're going to hike from Burness to Hethpool and get picked up on Monday morning in Hethpool. It's about 40 kilometres. It's it's uh, all on the border ridge of the Cheviot, and uh, it's not a long walk. But uh, I'm an old man. I'm, I'm not especially fit, so I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to take my time, and I'm going to camp two nights along the border ridge. And I think it's going to be glorious. I've been looking forward to this for absolutely donkeys. The first stop along the way is going to be Spithole Bothy. It's only an hour into the walk, but it's a nice place where we can sit down. We'll sit in the cool and we'll replenish all our water supplies. One of my worries, well not a worry, it's a minor concern about this walk, is that um, on, the, on the border ridge, which is the majority of the, the, the walk, there's just not a lot of water up there. And it's been really, really dry um, the last couple of weeks. And I've heard it from a couple of authorities, which is to say, mates who have been up there, that there's not a lot of water about. I don't know if you can make it out, but Spit or Bothy is just down there. It's starting to get a bit more hidden by the trees, and we'll take a short break in there, maybe have a brew, see what we feel like. But I wanted to show Double D what a proper Northumbrian Bothy is, because I don't think he's been to one or slept in one. No. 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 He's, been, he's been practicing the accent on the way up in the car. Uh, he's getting there. He's, he's not bad. Um, Belter. But, uh, yeah, Belter. Belter. Very good. Very good. Let's head for the Bothy now. Well, the Bothy gods have smiled on us folks and there's no one in the Bothy, which is nice. It's a nice, cool place to sit. And uh, it's a fantastic Northumbrian Bothy, one of my favorites, although it's really small. So it is nice when you get it to yourself. There's a look around in case you haven't been here before. Um, I like I like this buff. When Double D puts his glasses on, he looks like the Flash. He's a he's a speedster. Oh, there he goes. He's, he's going for the glasses. If you can get him out. You see what I mean? He's like a Marvel superhero. There's Mark, also a Marvel superhero. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> um, Hulk. <laughs> what a great little bothy though. There's a little storage cupboard here. It's always got a few supplies in. <laughs> Nothing. This must be the first bothy I've cooked with that hasn't got uh, tomato, ketchup and pasta. Oh. Bit more in here. Tea bags, beans, cooking oil. Oh, it is. It is tomato ketchup. It is tomato ketchup. Correct, but but no pasta. What a shame. Just some tea bags. Oh, wouldn't you know? Wouldn't you know it? Pasta and tomato ketchup. Aye, my bothy sense has never never let me down. And I always like to see the Northumbrian flag up there. Great. Red and gold. I think the, the colours of the flag derive from the colours that were laid on the, the tomb of um, St Oswald. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's where the colours come from. It's still a glorious day. We're just going to get some more water now. We'll fill it with a big bottle and then take it back to the, the Bothy to filter. The stream's only a few yards from the Bothy. Is that enough? Yeah. Diamond Dave has just found a lovely patch of mint out just outside the Bothy here, which uh, is handy. If you bring a lamb chop or something, you've got your mint right there. It'd be lovely. Well, let's go back to Spiritual Bothy for now. The next landmark we're going to get to is the Corkhead Head, cross that, and then onto Chew Green, the old Roman earthworks. Sorted, lads? All right. So I suppose we'd call this the Spithub Valley and it's a really beautiful, peaceful place. You never see anybody down here really. And it's, I guess it's one of the Cheviot's uh, lesser known valleys, but uh, just a really nice place, beautiful. Not many folk around. And the hike from Spithub to Chew Green is really nice. Just on this easy forest track. Bit of an incline, but nothing too bad.
So we're leaving the forestry road now and going up this little track here. We're coming off the big gravelled path onto a little track and from past experience this can be quite a rough overgrown track. And it's part of the pen anyway we're on properly now. And there's a, a finger post. Border Ridge and Pennine Way and Burness Church uh, to the south, three miles. No vehicle access. I'm not well, you can't get a vehicle through here. We followed the Pennine Way in a parallel way at the beginning because the actual Pennine Way is a really bad track. Um, but we came in on the forest road that parallels it to the west, a few hundred yards away. It's a much better track to get a spit up. Yeah, this path isn't so bad so far. But what we did is I knew this area could be boggy, so we we'll all put our gaiters on. It spit up. It's a sensible place to sit and rest and get your gaiters on. And it is real boggy here. Look at this. Proper Simpsons clouds in the sky there is uh, Double D called them. And what a beautiful view across to Scotland there. See some Scottish hills. I don't know what they're called, but what a cracking view. And what a glorious day it has turned out to be after all. The fence is just up there and after the fence we'll turn left and then under the coke head. This is our lunch stop folks and uh, we can see we've got amazing views over to Chew Green here. We can see the Roman earthworks. I'll try and get a drone shot of them later but I'm just going to have a cheese pasty and uh, take a break. <laughs> we've got some of the local inhabitants over here. A few sheep is all you normally come across. Oh, actually, no, there's uh, on the border ridge. That's the area where the wild cheviot goats hang out. So we've got a chance to see wild goats on the next couple of days. I hope we do. This is normally a really boggy area, but uh, well, it's still boggy, but it's not too bad. There you go. Warning from the Ministry of Defence. This is all MOD land, but we're north of the Corkit, so it's not live firing. There's public access at all times. You go south of the Corkit, you can only access it when there's um, the red flags aren't flying. It's only open at certain times. There's a tiny little stream running through here. I think uh, you should be able to hear it. And I'm, I'm going to take my rucksack off and drink a lot of water, filter it and replenish my water again. The lads are going to do the same. You know what, that's not even peat coloured. No. So what I'm doing is any little water source I come across, I'm not wasting the opportunity. I'm drinking my fill from my clean bottles and then just replenishing them. And uh, hopefully that way I stay hydrated. We're bang in the middle of Chew Green now and all we can see from the ground are these great banks, these, these, these earthworks. I hope you can make out those earth banks there, the remains of the four fold perimeter. Let's see if we can get a better view. This is pretty far north for the Romans to come. We are miles uh, north of the Roman Wall. I mean, that's back at Wall's End in Newcastle, and we're literally um, a 20 minute walk from the Scottish border here. You could probably haul your stone and, and hit it if you had a strong arm. So this place is, it wasn't as far as the Romans got because people forget about the Antonine Wall which was built after Hadrian's Wall and that goes between the Firth of Clyde and the Firth of Forth I think but it didn't last as long because that was made of just uh, turf and wood and it wasn't made of stone like Hadrian's Wall so it hasn't gone down in the history books as quite as memorably. I had to lose something on this camp and so far I've lost the wind muff for the microphone for my GoPro 11 so the wind noise is going to be a little bit more evident on the video from now on so apologies for that and if you know where I can buy a wind muff for the GoPro 11 it's a separate thing please let us know in the comments when it comes to lost drones I have to say I've got a couple of lads to thank I lost my drone at that uh, the hidden cabin I went to a couple of videos ago and I was at work when I got a text and um, you know through through uh, messenger and I said, I've got your drone. And uh, this lad, Chris, found me drone uh, beside where I camped. And he got his mate, Josh, to sort of like uh, see if he could find out how to contact me. So I'll pick it up next week, but Craig and Josh, I'm very thankful. And it goes to show there's, there's just great people left in the world. Thanks very much, lads. 
don't know if you can hear, but you're getting a clap from uh, Double D there. We're on the border properly now and the views have just opened up and uh, this is an amazing part of the chief views for views. I love it up here. It's only a couple of kilometres to the mountain hut now and that's where we've decided we're going to spend the night and it's been absolutely glorious. It's been such a beautiful day and a really nice walk in. I've done about 15 kilometres, another couple to go, so not at all strenuous and I'm, I'm really enjoying this. And I've even, we've even spotted the wild goats that are just behind me there. They're a couple of hundred yards away, so I don't think the GoPro will pick them up very well, but it's good to see them. Little struts across the bottom of the door to stop sheep getting in. Yeah. The lads are just looking in the window like kids at a sweet shop and nobody's gone in yet. <laughs> Let's see what's in the hut. See what uh, we've got. What's this? A pair of waterproof trousers. I guess someone's left them there from doing the Pennine Way. And what's on the shelf here? A bit of duct tape. That's gen genuinely handy. And there's two uh, pretty full canisters of gas here, but it's not the screw thread type, so I haven't got any use for them, unfortunately. A bit of hand sanitizer. Oh, a breakfast honey granola bar. Some adhesive tape. Oh, a nice instant chocolate, very nice. And we've got a plastic mug with various dressings and astoplasts in, that could, be, that could be handy. Caffeine and glucose tablets, maybe. Uh, tampons, well, you never know. And someone's left uh, a nice little pan set here. I guess this is towards the end of the Pennine Way and people just do the last push and maybe drop the heavy gear, you know. Uh, half a packet of super rice and uh, a carry more survival blanket. I guess that could be useful, couldn't it? And uh, this is pretty optimistic. A, a wine glass, plastic wine glass. Yeah, nothing to put in that tonight. Oh, and some more hot chocolate. I'm okay for hot chocolate and pans. This is the Mountain Hardware Sprite 1 and it's such a quirky little tent, uh, I quite like it. I love the shape of the, the head end of the tent that gives you extra space uh, for your gear and it's great when you want to film at night and stuff like that. It's a, it's a well made, good little tent. That's it fully set up and uh, it's even got a window which is a feature I haven't seen before on a wild camping tent. I'm not sure how I feel about that because you don't want to wake up and find someone staring at you but uh, I guess it's nice. If you have a look at the shape of the Mountain Refuge hut, it, uh, it reminds me of a certain uh, Star Wars vehicle on, on Tatooine. And the story is that uh, George Lucas was hiking in Northumberland with Ridley Scott, because Ridley Scott's from Durham, it's not a million miles from here. And uh, George Lucas saw, saw the hut and he went, uh, that's what my Jawa sand crawler is going to look like. So the design of the Jawa sand crawler was based on this hut in Northumberland. Just a quick disclaimer here folks, that might not be true. So I am a bit worried about the water situation because there's not just no water up here. So I looked on the map and saw where the nearest little blue line was and me and Mark just hiked out to there and it was only about a kilometre and a half round trip from the hut. 
and uh, we heard a little trickle and we, we couldn't get to it because it was just so choked and overgrown and small. So we followed it downhill until we could access it and we found a bit where if you parted the plants away, you, you had a little, you know, a three, four inch waterfall that was dripping clear water. So we collected some of that. I've got enough water for tonight now. I'll use it and in the morning I'll go back there and fill up and uh, hopefully that'll get me down to the hen hole tomorrow night. I'm having a lovely bag of chili con no I'm not I'm having a lovely bag of chili non carne with a bit of extra chili I tell you what folks sitting here with the sun going down on this beautiful night it's just absolutely stunning so pleased to be here the two fine gentlemen very kind In the water I boiled uh, and heated my chewing on carne in. I'm having hot chocolate with it and I'm putting in just the tiniest toot of spiced rum. Just a toot. 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 Say toot again. Toot. Toot. Two toots. Toot. Two aliquots of rum. Is it a spiced rum you say? A spiced rum. Oh, don't you need three toots of the spiced rum? Yeah, you're right. Mm. Three toots. Say toot again. Ooh. Yeah, that's it, the lads. <laughs> that's, that is it. I'm in my tent now, folks, and I'm really ready for bed. Absolutely cracking day, but my legs are feeling it. I've walked a, a good distance, and uh, I'm ready for a kip now. I just want to thank a guy called. Um, Mark Wood because I set up that buy me a coffee thing I saw a lot of youtubers have done that and it's where you can donate a little bit if you like the channel and I have to say if, if you want to donate that's great if you don't want to donate then I certainly do not do this channel for the love of money it just helps a little bit so totally voluntary but uh, Mark Wood was the first fella who bought us a coffee so thanks very much it is much appreciated but anyway um, good night folks I'm gonna get some kick I'll see you in the morning morning folks it's 20 past 7 the weather looks pretty grim so far it's all very grey and damp outside and hopefully it's just morning weather and it'll, it'll get better the plan for today is to pack up get up Lamb Hill um, onto the Windy Gile and from Windy Gile go down to the Hen Hole and camp at the Hen Hole and if we've got the time and the water and the weather's with us, we might take a diversion and get to the top of Chivia as well. But we might not. We'll see how we feel when we get there. Breakfast is a, a Russian pack of vegetarian sausage, egg and beans and a coffee bag. It's all about keeping the... Uh... Right folks, I'm off to perform one of the uh, the glamorous realities of wild camping. Here I go. So all the way right describes them well you know, the We're not on the walk proper yet folks, we're just hiking to the water source again to fill up before the the morning border ridge walk. This is our water source folks and it's not ideal but it's what we've got. Diamond Dave's got his hand right in the rushes there and collecting water.
Uh, må se. Here's the next finger post, uh, folks, and this is Windy Gale, one and a half miles up that track there. So I think that's Windy Gale there, where that cairn is there. So just uh, over a mile to go, then we'll have some bait. I've got a cheese pasty again, and I'm looking forward to it. Hi folks, we're on, we'll, we'll, gosh I'll admit I can't speak, we're on Windy Gile Summit now and it's really windy so I don't know if you can hear me especially with the, the loss of my muffler. But this place is always thought of as one of the the, the high points in the Cheviots, one of the great Northumbrian uh, summits really. But uh, the fence runs to the south of here and actually the, the actual Scottish English border runs right through the middle of the summit. So that's the trig point in front of us. So I think I'm sitting in Scotland now. So we've just left Windy Gile uh, about 10 minutes ago and it's amazing. The wind's just dropped already and already the air's really still. It's just something about that place. So we've got another ooh, seven or eight kilometers to go and that'll get to the refuge hut in Oak of Ken. And uh, from there, we're gonna just descend into the hen hole. So we've probably got another two and a half hours walking left to do it today. And uh, we've just had lunch at the Gile so everybody feels in good spirits. And, uh, Long before to get into the hen hole. It's a magic place, so it's going to be a great place to camp tonight. Trig point here, that's not on the map. Um, but can you see that? You can't see that. It's near King's Seat, so I'm going to call it King's Seat Trig Point. Uh, if you know any different, uh, let us know. This is the final push up to the ridge that leads to Oak of Cairn, just there. So I've only got a few hundred yards to go, but I'm really finding it difficult. It's really steep from this direction. Hi right, folks, we've made it to Oak of Cairn. So now all we have to do is descend into the hen hole. I can't tell you how good it feels to be in the hen hole with the, the, the tent up. I'd, I'd love to show you more of this place because it really is magical. It really is one of the special places in Northumberland. But the truth is I'm absolutely cream cracked. I'm just exhausted. So I'm just going to stay here. <laughs> Sorry. You can look at my other video if you want to see more of the hen hole. But the sun's going down over there and uh, I'm going to get some bait. I'm going to listen to that water and go to sleep. And I'll tell you what, we've just had enough water. 15 miles, probably 20 kilometers, 20 odd kilometers from the mountain hut at Yearning Saddle to Hen Hole. And to hear the water behind us there is uh, after having none of it on the ridge. It's just, this is what it's like to be a rich man. Well, here's the state of play, folks. It's not quite eight o'clock, and uh, everyone's just gone into the, the beds for a good night's rest, um, and I'm, I'm glad of it. I'd, all I want to do is set up for a night lapse and just get a good night's sleep. I'll tell you what, though, I've just uh, unbelievably bumped into a couple of fellas, um, Barry and Dave. Dave recognized us from doing the YouTube channel uh, in, the, in the hen hole, of, of all places. So that was a, a nice little coincidence. And they've gone uh, further into the, the hen hole to camp tonight, so that was nice to bum into them. 
Very nice fellas. Anyhow, I know it's late, I know it's early, but I'm old and I've walked a long way with a full rucksack and I'm just gonna get some sleep. Good night. That's us all packed up now and we're leaving the entrance to Henhole. All I've got to do is hike up the College Valley to Hethpool and get picked up by my lovely wife and thankfully that's mainly all flat. The last couple of days have been like a little mini epic for me. I've wanted to do you know, most of the Border Ridge in one go for, for ages and starting at Burness and ending at Hethpool. Uh, I haven't quite done all of it but that's what it feels like I've done and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm really glad you came along uh, for the trip and I'll see you in the next one.